he talks about anything except the SAT. I believe that a lot of students are pretty fed up with school and now they're being asked by parents or they've signed up for a course that's going to give them tips about the SAT and by sitting for nine hours or three hours times five, 15 hours, somehow their score will magically go up. And I think the students have figured out from the story about the lake that most of the solution comes from inside them. They have to do the time, they have to expose themselves to the vocabulary, expose themselves to the many problems that are out there, the types of problems, and just keep pushing the, the mind to a limit. Yes, you can do that for 15 hours, but it's going to take something like 100 hours to do this. Five hours a day for 20 days, that's what it did for me. In 100 hours, you reshape the mind. Now, for some people, it's difficult to spend an entire morning from like 8 in the morning to 1 o'clock looking at a book. Okay. I'm just giving you the feedback of what worked for me. Sitting, if I made you sit down and do problems for three hours uh, for five Saturdays, you'd only be getting 15% of the effect. It doesn't really kick in until you've done 100 hours. Part of that reason is, let's look at what um, we know about outliers. First page in the book, well, first section of the book talks about why people, why 10,000 hours seems to be the most important number. It's not arbitrary. It seems that if you put in about 10 hours, you will eventually come up with um, what it takes to become a really good at something. See that 10,000 hour rule? And so, do something for 2,000 hours and you're getting better, but it's when you hit that 10,000 hours. So you're a teenager, how can you have done something for 10,000 hours? If you do something in a classroom for 15 hours, you know, three hours, five times, you're not going to get the same effect as if you do 100 hours. So I, I encourage you to do a lot of work outside the classroom and, it, and you know, consider the class time about 10%. You've got to do 90% work. I tell people this, but they, they forget about it when they write their uh, essay. He didn't make us do work every, you know, 15 minutes. We were goofing off. And I understand that you might see it as goofing off, but it's constructive play. If you look at work as a period when you use play to discover and accomplish what you need to accomplish, then you're going to get a more mature way of dealing with hardship. Apple Computer, Google, these are advanced workplaces. And I encourage you to look at their websites. Find out what does it mean to play when you work. That's how you can approach the SAT. Play with it. Make it a game. Send your comments to tlasteve at gmail.com. That's The Language Academy. And uh, ask to be connected with my students. Go ahead. Make me a uh, contact and then go ahead. Click, click, click. Invite yourself to be um, a friend with uh, some students from Asia, Africa, South America, or Europe.